anymore. Dude, we do do this show anymore. <laughs> we right? do do this show all the time. Welcome, everyone, to the Quarter Twins podcast. We are here today to present my first presentation because... Yes. Uh, the Mad Max presentation was obliterated. I still have uh, Jordan's it's audio. Lost. Because <laughs> he's a smart it's person who knows the, how to the, do his own job. In the vault. Yes. You have to pay for our Patreon to get access Ooh. to that Mad Max presentation. Mad Max. I was, <laughs> oh, I was, in the vault. <laughs> I still have the slideshow, obviously, so maybe in the yeah. future I'll give it another go. Um, maybe someday. Or when I get or around to watching all the movies, we can... Uh, we can do a double. We can have a discussion. Yeah. But today we're going... To a different future, an alternate future. Big day today. If you yeah. will. Today is the first oh, of a series. Know. It could be our future. Which one? It could be. <laughs> yeah, good I would much rather go to <laughs> the Star Trek future. Yes. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are Max. embarking on a Star Trek journey. A Star Trek, if you will. Um, oh, yes. To the stars. To boldly go, if to you the will. planets. We're boldly going through the first six movies. This this is the okay. William Shatner verse. This is the original Kirk verse here, um, and we're going to be talking about Star Trek: The Motion Picture, Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, Star Trek Three: Search for Spock, Star Trek Four: The Voyage Home, Star Trek V: The Final Frontier, and Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country. Whoa! Um, in future They're all episodes, all five star movies, I presume. Yep. Every bang, single bang, one. Bang! 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 <laughs> and um, in future episodes, we will also be doing. The four uh, Picard movies, as well as the 2011 or 20, 2009 reboots, which there yeah. are currently three of, and I don't three believe plans for any more. No, we're never so, getting any, any more Star Trek ever. Ever. Again. Probably ever again. Nope. Uh, quick disclaimer here before we get into this presentation. I have. Uh, I have never seen the original series, and I have only watched these movies at most twice. Great. Four oh, of them, too. one time. So I'm going to need any Trekkies out there to just, like, <laughs> just chillax. This is not going to be... nothing. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be, like, a super informative... Uh, perfect, standard, amazing presentation here with all the facts. I just wanted to watch these movies and talk about them on the pod because I thought, we're not coming up with anything else. Let me just do this. <laughs> I literally <laughs> Googled... Know. What's a franchise we can we can milk for content? <laughs> yeah, I literally Googled long movie franchises. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Star Trek, yeah. I'll, I'll just do that. Um, I'm working. I'm sl very slowly working on Terminator movies. I'm only oh, yeah. too deep. I think right. I watched the good one, and then everything else is. Dude, let pretty, me tell you when I bad, but and I finished Voyage Home. I think it was like more than two weeks before I watched Final Frontier because I was like, uh, yeah. I don't know. I if feel I can like do yeah. This. I I feel like I'm on Letterboxd all day every day, mm -hmm. logging things, reading things. And I feel like you used to be right there with me, and I feel like there, there's a gaping hole in my letterbox life, which is oh. Joshua's letterbox presence. No. Uh, <laughs> every now and then, I see something come up for Joshua, but and you're like, yeah, we can get into this later, dude. I let me go I watch watched... a movie right now for you. <laughs> <laughs> we can get into this much later after your presentation, but I watched one movie every day from November. 26th to until uh, yesterday i broke my streak yesterday you just said november unfortunately september i mean september 26th all so the way to today year. yeah so that's a few days i have only weeks. watched one two three four five six seven movies in october i'm slacking hard here oh my goodness and that's like okay but 12 or 13 movies in september all that to say 
Uh, we will have time codes in this episode. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll, these will be separate episodes, but I, I will give you a Letterboxd recap at mm. the end of this episode if Heck anybody's yeah. interested in that. Before we do any of that, because I got lots to talk about. I got lots to talk about. I watched. This guy's got many so many I've things s- to talk I about. I have seen with my eyes so many things. Okay. Um, Just I, real right quick. Right now. Yep. Sorry. Uh, you've only <laughs> logged 20 more I movies was, than me this year. I was really going. So I was really just, going go, into that you, segue. You go right back ahead to uh, the segue. <laughs> yeah, I know. I yeah, yeah, yeah. twenty. I'm, I hit my hundred and fiftieth movie with Joker full et oh, It was oui. my hundred and fiftieth movie this year. And boy, do I have thoughts. Oh, uh-huh. okay. But before Think we get into it. any of that, take me into the world of mm. Star Trek. Why don't I? With yeah. Star Trek. The Motion Picture, directed Whoa. by Robert Wise I in 1979. I thought this was a Shatner joint. No, sir. Shatner only did uh, The Final Frontier. Is that uh, true? And it is so true. Leonard Nimoy has well, two movies, three and four, and Shatner was like, let me do one, and uh, <laughs> it's the worst one. So, But we'll get to um, it. Um, actually, it's in the contract. Um, so, Star Trek, the motion picture, 1979, Robert Wise, letterboxed, 3.2 stars. We begin in space for three minutes. This is the Paramount Plus official edition. We have, they they, they just play a whole song for you in the stars, and then the movie starts. Uh, I love it. Epsilon 9... Sorry. I, you go. <laughs> I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> I'm trying to do a podcast here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Man. No, 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 no. You go. Um, Epsilon. You, yeah, Epsilon. Okay. Epsilon right. is the name of the dog chef in the movie Up. Okay, guys? <laughs> you know, in the movie Ooh. Up? Oh, <laughs> wow. They go... They go to the, the, the forest and they meet uh, the old guy and he has all these do- all these dogs working for him <laughs> with the talking collars and he's making and they sit down for dinner and he goes epsilon bring dessert or whatever that's the dog's name that's the chef how do you remember Up- that i don't know <laughs> i just remembered i was thinking epsilon that is was... like it's like a greek letter or something right it's like e i <laughs> i just really thought that was there you go relevant information thank you for that anyway <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be uh, a very long <laughs> podcast. This is gonna be a long one. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So Epsilon Nine is a communication station. All right, they be picking up signals, and they p- t- pick mm. up a particular distress call from three Klingon ships. Okay, and this is what happened to those Klingon ships. Oh my gosh, this is what happened to those Klingon ships. Sorry. I, I have, I have seen this movie. I think, maybe once a long. You may have. So the Klingon ships are near this blue cloud, okay? This okay. blue, uh, wavy cloud, of of cloud of space, and right. they get shot because, of course, the Klingons are like, <laughs> pew pew. Uh, they do that a lot. They just go they gang do. gang and shoot. They shoot whatever they see. Um, and then they get shot back and they get obliterated. Okay. Mm. Um, so then we just cut. We just kind of go over to um, Vulcan. And we learn that Spock has not. Uh, right. Okay. So again, uh, the entire original series, all the TV show has take takes place before these movies. So they okay. made the TV show and they did all of that. Right. And then they did six movies. So again, have not watched the TV show at all. Don't care about it. Not interested in it. Um <laughs> hate it even. I I, I, w- I condemn trash. it. All right, it is it is <laughs> the official opinion of this podcast that the show is bad <laughs> and not worth your time. Um Exactly. Just kidding. But uh, <laughs> so 
Spock is on <laughs> Vulcan. All right. Don't know why. He's there to achieve colon R, which is the total absolution of emotions. And the tribunal is like, you nailed it. And then Spock is like, you know what? Screw it. I'm out of here. And he's like, pass. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm going back to the. I'm going back to the Federation. Long live and prosper, dingbats. And uh, that's what he says. That's a quote there. And that's then he Star goes Trek back. Yeah. Um, he punches Kirk in the face in that one, I think, right? Zachary Quinto. Yeah, beautiful minds. <laughs> Have you seen those ads? Heroes. Twenty four seven. My God. <laughs> Um, and so he heads back to San Francisco to meet up with the boys. San Francisco? Is that true? Yes, that's the, uh, that's the home that's base. That's where they hang out. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the home base of the Federation. I knew that, Trekkies. Because the Golden Gate okay. Bridge is there all the time. They right. love showing that. No fog. Um, the year is Stardate 7410.2. These are the boys. Okay. In the first movie, you'll notice yeah, they, are. they are going with uh, an, a non-traditional color palette here. They wanted to, they moved away from the fun <laughs> yellows and blues yeah. and reds and went for sort of a sad couch vibe. Beige. Yeah. yeah. And so here from left to right, we have Lieutenant Commander Hikaru Sulu. Uh, the best character. The pilot. Uh, Commander Montgomery Scotty Scott. The engineer. Uh, really, way back in the corner there is uh, Janice Rand. Um, she is a doctor, I believe. CPO, okay. whatever that means. Um, not really in... She's in the show. She's not really in the movies. Right. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Uhura. <clears throat> the most Uhura. influential female actor... Of all time, question mark, potentially? Yeah. Breaking breaking I mean, they, barriers for she, decades. Yeah. She was one Amazing. of the first, like, major roles for a black woman on TV. Interracial kisses so. on TV. Like, yes, literally, exactly. like, boom. Like, crazy. All this way. Star Trek has been a champion of... Gene Roddenberry, guys. There you go. I know him. That's a I name. Know him. I don't know what yeah. that is. Great stuff. He's the um, creator of Star Trek. Perfect. <laughs> I guess He's literally the creator of Star Trek. <laughs> Don't need to know that information. <laughs> Not important at all. Um, nope. We have Captain Will Decker. Uh, he's Decker. he's a vibe. He's the captain of the Enterprise, uh, the ship. <clears throat> we have Doctor Leonard Bones McCoy. Uh, mm. Bones. Bones. You know. Damn yep. it, Jim! I'm not a doctor. Uh, that that sort of vibe. <laughs> Except he is a doctor. He says he's not anything else. Um, anyway. Dr. Christine <laughs> Chapel, another doctor. Um, Dr. Christine Chapel. I think she's also a psychologist. I'm not sure. There's a psychologist. Oh, no, that's, um, that's Generations. <laughs> um, Admiral, Admiral James T. Kirk. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> me oh. Dr. Oh, James God. T. Kirk. Admiral James T. Kirk, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, James from now on. He's Admiral. He must have been promoted recently in the TV show at this point in I time. Guess, yeah. Lieutenant Spock, Science Commander, Lieutenant Ilea, okay. I believe, bald, and uh, Lieutenant Pavel Chekhov. Pavel. Who I is in him. charge of ordnance and yeah. sweet pants, pajama pants. <laughs> He looks right. naked from this. I know this it, it is point. crazy. These <laughs> outfits are wild. Uh, moving right along, um, <clears throat> the crew intercepts these distress calls from Epsilon Nine, and then Epsilon Nine is also like, "Hey, wait a minute! The clouds come in here. We're gonna get blown up, and they get eliminated." So, Kirk okay. is goes on an inspection of the. He's like, "Let me inspect the Enterprise," and while he's there. He is like, hey, actually, I'm going to be the commander again because sitting yep. at a desk chair is boring and I want to feel young. Um, and so he usurps Decker and is like, <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> and Decker's like, that's dumb, whatever. And uh, the ship isn't ready whatever. to go warp one. And um, Kirk is like, screw you. I'm going warp one. And this is what happens. 
classic Kirk. They gotta get Very to the good. cloud, right? So they're going with oh. one. Oh! Well, that effect is so nice. Warp one. Warp one. Warp one. Wormhole. <laughs> yeah, so I will also remind the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't have like the inner. They didn't have the ship's uh, bridge like on a thing they yeah. could shake. So they the directors right. have to like okay bounce this way. All right, now bounce this way. Oh. Right. So they we're not working just... with Star Wars money, yeah, guys. Geez. We're working with we're working with TV budget. Yeah. Uh, leftover money from the TV show, probably. Yeah. So. In addition to that, I have edited these clips, uh, so there may be some jarring cuts and audio jumps okay. uh, to make sure that they are copyright-free. And they have all been checked, so YouTube, don't screw me. Okay. Paramount? Yeah. Stay off my lawn. So obviously, um, the, the, en the Enterprise is not ready to go warp one, but they make it over there through the wormhole. He does it anyway. And Decker is like, dude, that was stupid. And Kirk is like, yeah, you're kind of right, actually. That was crazy. Um, <laughs> and so the crew <laughs> makes it to the blue cloud. And okay. they're like, what the heck? This, cr this cloud uh, probably <laughs> killed the Klingons and stuff because they thought they were attacking. But the Epsilon 9 didn't attack. It's a communication station. They were like, oh, but they were sending signals to their military <laughs> opponents. So they destroyed mm. the Epsilon 9 as well. So we will not send any signals or shoot any guns, and we're going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, the cloud uh, pulls the ship in, and lightning bolts in. You can see it here on the left uh, in this in uh -huh. this region there of the left of the corner of the screen um, and you can see that lightning bolt and in the middle of the frame there you can see some sort of human figure in lightning form right. this is lieutenant Ilea. Right. she has been abducted okay. uh, obliterated rather um, into lightning bolts and just disappears she's gone p.s okay. uh, decker and Ilea used to work together and were super in love um, classic classic conflict of interest right there and so the crew is like well crap um, they just blew up our deal and our woman is gone and we gotta get a new one for the next her woman, movie her one woman yeah. <laughs> we need another female character because we have Ahura and she's doing great things right. and making great strides but we still do need the hot woman in the chair so we got to yeah, replace her. Where's the hot white lady? Yeah. All right, guys. That was fake. That was a joke. Yeah. All right. But that I don't mean that. Th that. That is probably what they were saying back then. As as Take as that off the as, mu as much of a joke as it is. Um, Cut that out. Okay. And so <laughs> they go into the cloud, and Spock goes. He's like, I think this cloud is sentient. I think the cloud is a being. Okay, and so he gets in a spacesuit, a sweet red spacesuit, and he goes through the ship's uh, fluctuating sphincter, and um, he enters this weird mind space and sees things, and then comes back, and he's like, guys, this oh, cloud trippy. is a child. It's a baby, but it's also super smart. And so they fly the Enterprise into the hole, and they land, the hole. and they, and the, and the, the three, our three boys, uh, Decker, oh no, Bones is there too, there's four, four people. Four boys. Uh, they go to the inside of the ship. And they, by the way, inside the cloud, there's a giant, long ship that has uh, an interior in it, but it's the thing that's like emanating this big cloud of energy and it's like threatening to destroy okay. the whole deal. So, yeah. Also, Ilea comes back, but she is no longer Ilea. She is, in fact, Ooh. the ship herself. Oh. But like Whoa. in a weird, like, 
they've taken over her body and are using it to communicate with people. And it's sure. like, hey, I got a message. I got to send it to the boy. And they're like, who's the boy? And he's like, I don't know. He was on this planet. Where is he? And they're like, okay. So they go into the ship and they find V'ger. By the way, this is the name of the baby is V'ger. V'ger. And mm, yes, so, I remember V'ger. Yeah. So here is the discovery of V'ger. Shocker. V'ger. V'ger. <gasps> wow. Could you hear Star that Trek at all? Voyager, you guys. Yeah, I could hear okay, that. Okay, good, because I could barely hear that. All right, let me... <laughs> Um, okay. So, V'ger is actually Voyager 2. Voyager 1. Just played the clip. I couldn't remember. What did he scratch off? Oh, doesn't say. Okay, doesn't matter. It is the Voyager space probe from NASA. Over 300 years okay. in the past. And right. basically, it went out. Like we told it to and sent, give, told it to tell people stuff and take in information. And it has so much information, it became sentient and became a giant space probe and is coming back. And it's like, what's up, guys? Awesome. I have all the knowledge of the universe and I'd love to give it to you guys. And they're like, we're not NASA. And the thing is like, what? We're not interested in that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so basically... They're like, we got to come to a solution here. We need to be able to let V'ger uh, give this information. And so Decker is like, well, uh, Ilea got taken away, and now she's part of this machine. And Captain Kirk just kind of took my job from me um, mm -hmm. right after the TV shows gave him the admiral position. So... I guess I'll just sacrifice my life force to this being. Huh? And so here is him sparkling. <laughs> I love these. I... <laughs> it gets... Yep. Now his head is emanating. Now they are really emanating. Oh, now they got to run because the whole thing is getting obliterated. Oh, big beam. Oh, whoa, oh. it's exploding. Their romance now, is too powerful. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Everybody died. No. Um, but basically, <laughs> the Voyager space probe and Decker and Ilea kind of all become one new super intelligent being. Okay. And then explode. God. And doesn't come up ever again. And awesome. uh, we're just kind of like, hope those guys have fun. We'll never see those guys again. And we're just going to move right along. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's literally like not much else happens. The movie awesome. just kind of ends. Great. We're going to move right on. What did you over. rate that movie? My personal rating. Oh, yes, that does matter, doesn't it? Let me find that out for you. What was your personal rating of that? Let me find the... This is the movie... This is the one Star Trek movie. Actually, I've seen another one more than this one. This is the one that I've seen... The most times? Often. The Wrath of Khan. Ah, yes. I will get to that. I've seen a different one more times. We'll get to, we'll get to I that. I gave this one a th perfect three stars. Right down the middle, I figure, awesome. you know... All things considered, solid movie. We move solid, right along solid to 1982. Nicholas Meyer, his first of two movies. He directed okay. uh, two and six as well. They were like, hey, awesome. dude, you directed the best one, and William Shatner was really bad. Can you come back and uh, <laughs> do this last one? He was like, sure. I gave this one four stars. So mind you, I gave this one okay. three stars. The average is 3.2. I give this one four stars, 3.9. So I'm right on the money with the general public. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So this movie I begins agree. with the Kobayashi Maru, which is a classic, uh, yes. a classic test 
of classic no win scenario that's the one it is the no win scenario except for sometimes chris pine or james rejected captain i'm getting something on the distress channel visual battle station Oh, everyone's dead. Oh, oh the beast. Don't take prisoners. This shot? Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's so sick. He's pretty sweet. <laughs> He's pretty awesome. That's the Kobayashi awesome. Maru was just a test. It was fake. It's just a test, you guys. He didn't die. Nobody died. And so, um, why can't I swipe through this? Hello? Let me deal, derail this entire... There we go. What the heck was the point of that? Okay. Um, so, this movie is taking place in 8130.3. Okay? okay, so get your calculators out and figure out how long that has been since 7410.2 or whatever. 12. Nobody know. understands. Um, and so he is administering the test to some new cadets who were joining the squad. Specifically... Uh, Lieutenant Savick, who will right. appear in this movie and the next movie as well, as Savick. a different person, as a different actress. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. Side note, Chekhov is on a completely different ship. He's just He was just like, right. I'm out. I'm going to work on a different ship now. No explanation. Um, so he's working, and let me read my notes real quick. I'll be editing this, so it's okay. It's fine. Um, Right. That's the power of editing. Yeah. So Chekhov has a new captain, Captain Terrell. Okay. And they have received a distress signal. And they go to the planet to look... Sorry, that's incorrect. Let me just start over. <laughs> There's no distress it's, call. It's fine. Um, Chekhov has a new Run captain, Captain Terrell. Right? Mm. And... Chekhov and Terrell are working in tandem with a s private science vessel, um, which I can't remember the name of, but it is in my notes. We'll get to it later. Um, All right. And the science vessel is working on Project Genesis, okay? Yeah. Everybody knows Genesis. They love Everybody. it. It's the beginning of the Bible. And so <laughs> they are my looking to book. introduce life on a barren planet. Okay, so they go to this yeah. planet, Chekhov and Captain Terrell go to this planet to, in search of life so that they can introduce life mm -hmm. to this planet using uh, Project Genesis. Mm -hmm. So they get to the planet and they find a Federation star trip, the SS Botany Bay. Yes, the SS the Botany, Botany Bay. Bay, Chekhov recognizes the name from the TV show and he's like, we gotta get out of here, guys bad mm -hmm. guys around here and Terrell's like what are you talking about and then uh, this guy shows up with his oh. scary mask Benedict Cumberbatch it's terrifying it's a cool glove oh That's an awesome mask, gotta say. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, it's gone. Whoa, it's gone. Khan. Khan. Yeah, this one took a little bit of extra that was awesome. effort that was awesome. to make it <laughs> copyright. Um, but I, I just thought you were doing a bit. bit. It it yeah. ended up being a bit, yes. Um, so Chekhov meets Khan, and Khan is like, you know, not only do we live here, but there are these little worms that live here, and these little mm. worms, if we stick them in your ear, will let us tell you what to do, under threat of death. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Chekhov and Terrell get. Weird creatures in our ears. 
right? <laughs> yes. So, uh, meanwhile, awesome. Kirk and Spock and the boys are um, hanging out, and they are they are doing an inspection of the Enterprise, which is commanded by Spock right now. He's the captain. Right. right. Right, right. And so he is with his friend and cadet, Savick, who is also a Vulcan. She's like the lieutenant commander, second in command kind of deal. He's sort of bringing in the next generation of Vulcans into the Federation itself, into the yes. Star Trek and Starfleet, even. And so they then get. Uh, let me make sure that I'm understanding this movie. I feel like I'm missing something here. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So Chekhov, under the control of uh, Khan, contacts the, um, the science vessel that they are working with, the Regula One. Mm. And the Regula One... Uh, response and Chekhov is like look hey we need all your data we need everything the whole project take it up to the USS Reliant that's the ship I work on and yep. uh, while you're at it um, I'm gonna call Kirk you know Kirk I'm gonna call him and tell him to come over here too because we just we need to gather all this evidence up we need to take it we're gonna go and so um, the Genesis team here David uh, and Carol Marcus Whoa. are like, I know that, I know that what, name. What the heck is going on? This is super weird. We're not Federation. We don't have to follow orders. We're going to call Kirk, too. They call Kirk, and Chekhov calls Kirk, and they are on their way. Um, and so Kirk and Spock, they are like, wait, no time for an inspection this new crew we gotta go and so they go to this planet that doesn't have a name because it doesn't have life on it and while they're flying they learn about the genesis project marcus is talking to kirk they have trouble communicating she's like what the heck is going on with this checkoff guy i thought he worked for you and so they get sent this package they find the genesis project file and they watch the, the promotional video, and they learn that the Genesis vi device is basically a nuclear bomb that blows an entire planet up, and then the remnants of that destroyed planet are brought to life. Right. Ma literal matter reconstruction at the fundamental mm -hmm. basic level. And so, obviously... People like Khan, and in the next movie, movie um, Christopher Lloyd, uh, believe that oh. the device can be used on a planet with already life on it, and they'll just blow it up, and everything and everyone yep. on that planet will die. So, uh, Khan is like, that sounds like fun, let's get that, and let's get Kirk in that blast as well. <sighs> so... <laughs> <laughs> uh okay <laughs> so wow thank you <laughs> uh it was like you could you could find the pitch of that it was so consistent so nice <laughs> oh, thank you i appreciate that you didn't have to say that but you did and i appreciate that <laughs> so um check off and terrell obviously mind controlled they're talking they eventually uh, attack Regula One with their ship, and mm. uh, in a, in an attempt to get the Genesis device. And so, uh, do they fail? Do they succeed? Who knows? In the meantime, they use the USS Reliant to also attack Kirk when the Enterprise shows up. So the Enterprise gets there, and Khan is like, "What is going on?" Um, <laughs> And he shoots them, and they're, both of their ships kind of get destroyed low-key. Um, Khan runs away, and the Enterprise can't leave. But the 
uh, Khan and his boys are kind of under the impression that they definitely lost that fight, so they ran. But in reality, the Enterprise is pretty borked. So um, they go to the space station and they find pretty much everybody has been killed or they're gone. Uh, because Kirk can't find Marcus, uh, David, or what's Carol. Her name? Carol, thank you. Nope. <laughs> Who's giving this? <laughs> I don't it. know anything. I don't even know the creator. She's in the. the she's in Into Darkness. It's true. So I know is. that character. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Carol. Um, her father is played by Ed Harris. That's not true. Um, I'm not true. I always think it's Ed Harris. I know. He's basically Ed Harris. It's, he's pretty much the same guy. <laughs> Um, so they go, and they understand, basically, the leftover survivors of the regular one science vessel have beamed themselves down to the nearby forest moon of Endor. Uh, just kidding. Right. It's just a moon with no life on it at all. And here they are. They find them. Here. They beam down. Side note, you may notice that Chekhov and Terrell are with them. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. are under the impression that they uh, were taken hostage by Khan and forced to do this, and then praise, praise. Um, were locked in little storage lockers, so they're still good guys at this point, we think. Genesis, I presume. Right, right, right. <coughs> Phasers down! You. I'm Dr. Marcus. Jim! Okay. Jim! Did you, did you understand this video? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, 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 I got it. I got so it. they find the Genesis device and the survivors of the regular one crew. And Jim uh, understands that he was punching his son. So, Great. side note, Kirk has a son? Kirk um, has a son. I think that is knowledge that we already had, but not that it was this kid specifically. Sure. Um, so, then once they understand, Chekhov and Terrell see the survivors, and they see the Genesis device, they're like, back to being evil again. And so, oh. they're like, put them up. And then Terrell is like, screw this. I will not be made to defeat my own federation. And he uh, sacrifices himself uh, at the cost of immense pain. He phasers nice. himself and obliterates Dang. his entire body, disintegrated to dust. Brutal. Brutal. And so then we kind of hang out in the cave for a while and the cave turns out to be this beautiful glorious Paradise. environment and uh so they've used the genesis device in a smaller scale in this moon as a sort of a proof of concept here it is mm-hmm. check this out this crazy awesome device is totally working we've created life Gorgeous. on this planet don't worry uh you you might actually see here on the far right of the bottom frame those mm-hmm. there are three uh skulls three giant skulls right here right don't really know what happened there but uh there are three don't worry giants. about it i wouldn't worry about it maybe a little foreshadowing for the next movie who can say mm-hmm. um and so they're chilling in this cave and savik is like how did you beat the kobayashi maru i don't get it mm. And he's talking about how he changed the conditions of the test so that it was possible to win, which is um, something he does in Star Trek 2009 as well. He cheats right. the system. And so right. uh, he had left Spock on the Enterprise and told him to fix the ship in two days. And so Khan was listening in, and he was like, we will destroy them in two days. And uh, mm. there was it was actually a coded message that they were like, fix the ship in two hours. 
And so oh, the ship is fixed in the two old hours. days to hours. Yes. Switcheroo. That's right. <laughs> Classic. And Classic. so um, Spurk. Sp- <laughs> Spurk. <laughs> uh, he's falling apart, everyone. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> Spurk. <laughs> Kirk. Uh, gets yes. and everybody gets beamed up by, um, th- by Spock and the crew, uh, but the de- the Genesis device was taken by Khan, um, and so they meet up meet back up in space. They're two ships and they go head to head, and they kind of do some fancy flying. They go through a nebula in a cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, and they fight each other, and Khan is like, I lost. But my dying breath I will use to quote Shakespeare for you. And he quotes Shakespeare as he unlocks this key, because he's going to blow up the Genesis device, but right before it blows up, he's going to beam it into the other ship. But what doesn't happen is he doesn't beam it over, and so his ship blows up hardcore but during this battle before uh, i was sorry the wave from the explosion uh hits the moon and or the the planet rather nearby planet not the moon and it starts doing genesis device things It, it burns the entire planet destroyed it and starts becoming a new planet This is all exciting and fun and good. Uh, Sadly, though, the Enterprise is very nearly destroyed. And within the specific uh, dilithium chamber uh, core of the ship's hyperdrive, they um, cannot escape the impending explosion from the Genesis device. So they need to go faster. Spock is like the needs of the many. And he goes down there and subdues Bones and um, gets inside the radiation room. Spock right. Fu. Oh, yes. He gets inside the radiation here. room and he yes. fixes the ship and the ship is able to escape. And this Damn, causes Spock. Um, severe radiation poisoning at like immense death level over the lethal right. dose he's and super so dead. kirk gets there and he's like spock because um, that's how he talks spock, you know. no. that's a perfect yeah, right. yeah yeah um and so they put their hands on the glass and kirk yells con uh with a little bit more emotion in there and um then they have a beautiful funeral uh, where they put Spock's body in a torpedo and shoot him at the planet. Um, and he's to left space. to buried in the Genesis planet. Yes. On the planet's surface. Then we move on to search for Spock. The search for Spock. That He's dead, <clears throat> though. What? But he's dead, though. What? So the interesting thing about that is... That he died so hard that he directed the next two movies. <laughs> they were just like He's, this. He got the sent actor. back in time. Yeah, Leonard he Nimoy became a movie director. Became a director and directed the next two Star Trek movies and wrote himself yes. back to life. That's a king move. Yeah. Uh, 1984, <clears throat> Leonard Nimoy, 3.2 stars. I gave Here this one three and a half. So I'm a little above. But still pretty close. Here we go. Um, so, um, this is good. We're making good progress Spock. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep it brief. Um, so here are the players and the planet. So this right. is the Genesis planet, okay? And we have Spock, and we have Krug, Krug, played by Christopher Lloyd. That's a big name of an actor who's still huge name. an actor today. Yeah, um, still kicking for the for the most part. He's still out and about, and he so, looks like a dead man. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. be honest, he's doing great. Yep. And so, 
let's see here. Uh, the opening for the funeral as they send him off to the Genesis planet was a great call. The movie appears to take place immediately after Wrath of Khan. Okay. And the boys are sad right and Kirk after. is depressed. So he's just lost his best friend, his good yeah. buddy, his emotionless sidekick, and uh, he's real sad about it. Meanwhile, Krug, Krug, I think it's Krug. I don't know where I'm getting Krug. Krug. Krugy, Krug, has purchased data from the Genesis Project, and they're headed from the neutral zone. <gasps> Not the neutral zone. They're Not on their the way to zone. the Genesis planet. They want that bomb. They want the oh. bomb. to c Because you could just bomb Earth with it and kill the entire Federation command, right? Yeah. In one fail... Those guys. In one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, Kirk and, Kirk and the crew are sad. They just had a funeral. And um, then Kirk learns that somebody went into Spock's room. And it's like, whoa, dude, you oh. shouldn't be in there. And it was Bones. Oh. <laughs> his face Bones has lost his unreal. mind. He's talking <laughs> like Spock. He oh, really? is, like, really confused and scared. And he's having dreams about a mountain. Okay. And uh, he wants to go home to Vulcan. No way. Okay. Which is not Bones' home. He's turning into Leonard Nimoy. Yes, indeed, indeed. So, other news. The Enterprise has been decommissioned. Oh. And needs to be taken back to Earth. So they are about to leave. And the Genesis Planet incident is sort of... Uh, not really kosher anymore. Before they leave, though, um, Marcus and Savick stay on the planet. Side note, Savick is a different woman now. Uh, it's okay. the same person, but different actor. Um, Got it. So Marcus and Savick investigate a weird signal, wired signal. Whoops. And um, they, they stay behind on the Genesis planet, the Enterprise goes back to Earth to be decommissioned. Right. Um, Scotty is also taken aboard the only other ship in the space dock called the Excelsior. Okay. Excelsior. This is the Giga ship. This is the first in the new gen with the new hyperdrives and all this sort of stuff. It's crazy, super maxed out ship. And uh, this is capable of transwarp drive. Okay, no you've heard about way. you know about transwarp. I've heard about I know you about know all about you know about sure. that transwarp. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so that's going on back home. Got it. So in other news, we have um, we have a little party. We have some sad parties with Kirk because he's sad. And Bones is crazy, so they have some beer. And uh, Spock's dad shows up. And is no like, way. hey, what's up, guys? So, um, did my son... Um, or, no, sorry. He, Spock's dad, is under the impression... Representative something. What, I don't know his name. Um, he's a representative of Vulcan in the Starfleet Senate something. Uh, he comes something. to he comes to Kirk's house and he's like, "Hey, um, why haven't you gone to Vulcan yet?" And and Kirk is like, "What do you mean?" And uh, he's like, "Well, Spock gave you his Katra, right? You have to take it back to mm. Mount Salea." And he's like, "No, we were separated during the fighting. We never saw each other." And uh, because Kirk. Or, sorry, we couldn't touch each other because of the glass. So he couldn't transport right, right. his Katra. And then he's like, well, we have to go get his body then. Why'd you shoot his body onto <laughs> this random uninhabited planet? Yeah. Um, what have you done? We need to get his Katra so that he can be released into the Vulcan ether, uh, Shaki Ra sure. or whatever. Um, yes. And... Then they come to the, they they sort of start to realize maybe 
that uh, this is why Bones is uh, crazy now. Um, right. Because flashback, he when he mind melded slash Vulcan nerve pinched Bones so that he could get into the radiation room, he had transferred his Katra to Bones Whoa. instead of his best friend Kirk. So now they need to go back to the Genesis planet because they need to save Spock's Katra. They need to get his body back mm-hmm. and they have his Katra. Maybe they can, you know, last funeral rites and stuff like that. So they need to go, but the Enterprise has been decommissioned and their mission is not approved by the Federation. They can't take the Excelsior or anything. So... Yeah. During this time, Scotty is inspecting the new Excelsior, and he, like, sabotages the trans-warp drive, and they bust out of the space dock on their way back to the planet. So, the Genesis planet go burr. So... <laughs> and yes, that, that's, a, that's a Titan. It sure does uh, go angel. burr. That's an angel from Neon Genesis oh. Evangelion. Okay. Um, so the microorganisms that lived bacteria style on the missile tube that was sent to the planet are these gross pink objects on the top of your screen. They sort of sure. become little fish prehistoric things, and then they become Shai Hulud. Um yeah. Meanwhile, the environment is rapidly changing on the planet all the time. And so Savick and Marcus are they are looking about. They find Spock's tube and these dramatically evolved microbes, but the tube, which was the weird signal they had discovered, was coming a life form mm-hmm. signal, sort of weird thing happening coming from this tube. But all that was left were some Vulcan burial robes and no body, Jesus style. And Whoa. um Resurrection. So then, yep, yep, yep. The passion of the Spock. So Savick and and, and David Marcus um, traverse the planet, they follow some footsteps, and they reach this weird desert snow zone. Um and they find Spock. But Spock is baby. He's like 13 Spock years old or something. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason that the planet is going through so fast, it's aging rapidly, is because David used protomatter in the Genesis device, which is apparently protomatter. some super awesome stuff that makes things work, but... It doesn't always work the way you want it to, Uh, and that's scary. Uh, So in addition to that, Spock is also aging rapidly, which means that he has to go through this this, uh, Spock Vulcan blood boiling thing that happens. Um, My blood is boiling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here is a clip of... Spock's blood boiling. Okay. Run through changes. Yeah. Oh, he is literally younger. Yeah, it's just a different kid. It's a very beautiful, tender moment between some Vulcans. Love that. Um, learning how to go through. Uh, puberty together. Love um, that. And so, basically, that's going down. Krug, back in the picture. Krug. Mm-hmm. Krug makes it to the Genesis planet, and he's like, I'm here for my Genesis device. Where are my Genesis homies at? And um, <laughs> he beams down to the planet and finds Savik, Spock, and Marcus. And he's like, I need my Genesis device, and he holds them hostage as Kirk and the Enterprise show up, and he beams, he hails um, the Enterprise, and he's like, hey, look, I'm going to need this Genesis device right now, because I want to bomb 
your home planet. And Kirk is like, we don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> and then Christopher Lloyd is like, okay. All right. Ted, and now to show that my intentions are sincere, I shall kill one of the prisoners. Wait a minute. Oh no. Not Davis. David. Derv David. Da David. 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 Yeah. Oh. Oh. So William Shatner <laughs> was like performance of a lifetime. Yeah. He was like, "Let me really <laughs> let me really relish this moment." Oh. oh. You killed my son. My boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy! <laughs> okay. So, after this, then we get... Obviously, uh, Kirk is super angry, and even now, he is even more racist towards Klingons. And this will come up <laughs> in the future movies, by the way. Sure. Um, and so, he and the, a couple of the boys boom, uh, beam down... And they are going to tussle for these hostages. And in addition... Uh, so yeah, so the, the big fight goes down on the planet's surface. And they kind of own... And the... Uh, the Klingons kind of just lose this fight overall. And... Huh. But the planet is, like, erupting. It's just volcanoes now and giant spires of rock flying into the sky because it's so hot and all this <clears throat> stuff. Huh. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong movie. I mean, what I'm telling you is not incorrect, but I was looking at the wrong movie. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um that's hilarious. Okay. So sorry. Um, <laughs> right. You right, got right. it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, back, it. I'm, back, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm um, back. He's getting so, out of control. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> sorry. I just. I was reading it and I was like, yeah, this is what happened. And then I read a yeah, name, and I was yeah. like, oh, this is not the right movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh the Klingon ship and the Enterprise ship fight each other, yeah. and the uh, that doesn't go very well for the Klingons or the Enterprise. But it's worse off for the Enterprise. So the Enterprise is kind of in a bad spot, and... The hostages are not in a good spot either. Uh, the Klingon captain kills, or David, David sacrifices himself. This is great. And Spock goes through another transformation. Savik is like, we have to get him off the planet. The planet is beginning to destroy itself. Uh, meanwhile, Kruge, Krug, why do I ever... <laughs> Krug beams himself back to the surface and um, is sort of a prisoner exchange. Okay. He, he transports himself to the surface and transports everybody back up to the Enterprise. Or sorry, to the, to the um, Klingon ship, still prisoners, except for Kirk and Spock. I don't know why he bothers not taking Spock, but Kirk and Spock are on the ground and... It's 1v1 time, okay? Oh, yeah. It's 1v1 time. Kirk and, Sp Kirk and Krug... Thank you. Krug. Uh, fight, and the planet is starting to be destroyed, and it's in, and it's in its final stages here, really. Mm, and exploding. we get Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get this glorious battle between these two. Oh, that's cool. Give me Genesis! Give me your hand! I am Heaven! Do not love 
you! <laughs> Amazing stuff. <laughs> I, I have had it. enough of you. <laughs> you! I love it. He's That's so Kirk. Like, I'll oh, help yeah. you off this ledge if you want, but if you protest any longer, I will throw you into that I lava. I <laughs> will kill you, and you will die. I will actually murder you. <laughs> and so Kirk defeats Krug, and they beam back up to the Klingon vessel. Um, and the Enterprise is destroyed, right? They were on a skeleton crew, you know, they, the ship was decommissioned, all the cadets were skeleton gone. Skeleton crew. So, I just hey, perked up a, a little bit. Mm. <laughs> just woke back up from this boring... Well, let's talk about Star Wars a little oh. bit. Let's talk about the Acolyte. God. <laughs> Ugh. Got that. <laughs> what a great show. Yeah, you guys got that show canceled, you freaking yeah. losers. Pretty sad. Very, Anyways. very, very, very sad. Um, so they they beam back up to the Klingon vessel, and um, <clears throat> they defeat the remaining Klingons and take the ship to Mount Silea. They have Spock, they have Bones, and, and Spock's Katra. They go to Mount Silea. Bones plus Spock plus Spock equals Spock. Mm. So they have a ritual, Avatar style, and yes. they uh, they recom Ma Ewa is called, and they recombine, they reconstitute Spock. He's now fully aged again. Um, kind of stinks for Leonard Nimoy. He didn't get a couple of years back. Uh, he's he's back to his current age. Still old. Yep. Yeah. And um, been old since day one. This guy. They kind of he kind of pretends not to remember for a second, and then he's like, "Jim," and uh, they're all like, "Oh, here he mm. remembers," and uh, they're all happy and they nice. Like, um, and that is the third movie, and we'll move on to Star Trek IV: The, the Voyage best. Home. Three point seven favorite. stars. I gave this one three and a half stars as well, leaving Wrath of Khan at the top. Um, so I'm a little below on this one, but oh, the general the general consensus is that this is probably the best it's so one. So goofy. Uh, this I is the one it. where they replaced William Shatner with Matt LeBlanc. You can see Joey there <laughs> in the yeah. picture. I'm seeing that. Good I really grief. don't know what happened. This art piece is just, it's really he giving really Joey looks Tribbiani. like Matt LeBlanc. Yeah. He really does. And honestly, from this artwork, he would make a good Kirk. I know it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's hilarious. Matt LeBlanc, his career, man. Poor Anyway, guy. go ahead. He really got God, <laughs> didn't he? So, uh, the USS Saratoga. Whoa. finds a probe mm -hmm. and the probe is uh not good and it destroys the uss saratoga it blows yep. it up but before it blows it up uh they send a signal back to starfleet they're like hey probe on its way uh, and they're <clears> like thanks for the <throat> info stuff going on we'll we'll worry about that later we need to punish the boys so the boys are punished <laughs> For their Poor recent, boys. the boys are punished for their recent activities, of resurrecting their friend, mm. uh, busting out of the space dock, fighting Klingons outside of the neutral zone. It's all, yeah. it's all, yeah, it's all bad. So, Golly. Kirk uh, is depromoted from uh, mm -hmm. admiral. They lose their ranks. It's all sad, and uh, they go back to. They're just like, uh, we're screwed, life is over, and um, we don't know what to do with ourselves. And the Klingons are like, we need these guys punished, death sentence for them. Kill them. They killed Kill them. Krug, and uh, they're like, Krug. okay, like, this isn't awesome. Also, the Klingons are like, you guys are developing a weapon of mass destruction, planet killer, bomb, we need to worry mm. about that as well. That's a problem. Uh, so basically the Klingon president is like, there will be no peace until the Federation extradites Kirk and his crew. Uh, which, uh, uh, due to a unanimous vote, occurs. The crew is unanimously 
decides to return to Earth in order to answer for their crimes they yes. committed while saving Spock. Um, this is a picture from the end of the movie, by the way. I'm using it for the pur- for the pur- purposes of the punishment photo. Uh, I wouldn't I did, have even I known. Did, thank you. I did this willingly. So they are still on Vulcan. They've got the message that they have to come back to get punished. Um... So then the probe destroys the Saratoga and Federation uh, ships as well, creating an energy field or releasing powerful energy waves. The probe is able to effectively knock out all electricity on a ship and destroy them. The probe is now on Earth. Oh boy. Here it is. It's this yes. gray cylindrical model. Um, One and of the ships from Dune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Kind of similar to the Hayliners. Similar kind the of. The Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out um, Children of Dune. Oh, yeah. Banger book right now. I'm Am not I... very far, but I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, I was going to ask, can you stay behind me? I need to know more about Dune than you. So <laughs> yeah. you're finally I'm catching gonna, up to I'm me, and I'm up. really not interested in that. Um, <clears throat> that's, I'm just kidding. You read at your own pace. That's fine. I'm, I'm actually already done. So Crap. That's my bad. Um, actually already seen the next movie what the, the fourth movie memory oh whoa yep. you're on that spice yeah i dude i'm on the spice melange the spice melange <laughs> and it's geriatric effects it's geriatric effects um, that's right <clears throat> right i'm so, gonna watch dune part two later i think oh yeah that movie's it's a so good movie good. i need to rewatch challengers um Me too. i need to decide which one's my favorite movie of the year whoa is it actually a contest between the two for you? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was going to say. But that's crazy. I'll give it a chance. Right on. So the probe uh, is sending this signal out, this electrical pulse. It's knocking out all the systems and electricity on Earth. It's really bad, guys. And it also starts like a, a couple giga hurricanes. All right. Right. And it's destroying Topical, the West Coast. Unfortunately. It's, yeah, that's my bad. Um,. Sorry to everybody out there. Hurricanes are awful. That sucks. Yeah. Um, so the Ahura and Spock kind of figure out that the sound that's coming from the probe, like if you distort it and put it through water, it kind of sounds exactly like a humpback whale. Right. But all the humpback whales are extinct because humans today suck and yeah. uh, they were just they trying to all. tell us that. And so they're like, we have to go back in time uh, to save the whales and bring the whales back. So the key. Because they're the Stopping key to saving this. the universe. Yeah. And so they have to go back Which is beautiful, in time. by the way. Yeah. It's a beautiful concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to love that. This what am I looking at right here? I'm looking at Lightyear. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at Top Gun Maverick. That's right. Best movie of 2023. I know it's not a time travel pick, but <clears throat> I I just like the space helmet he was in. So Yes, yes. But also Lightyear goes back. He actually Dang. goes future time, but still. Remember Lightyear? That was one of our first steps. Yeah, man. I think it was, like, was I think it was up day. in the 20 20 episodes, but that That's still a while back. We're like mm-hmm. 80s now. This might be 80. Who knows? It could very well be. I lost count. Um, and so they like slingshot their Klingon <clears throat> ship around the sun um, right. and use the super speed to go back in time. And they go back to San Francisco in the 1980s, baby. Yes. And uh, they're wearing their silly clothes, but also some of them are wearing their normal clothes. Yeah. And so these are the guys, and these guys are divided up into three teams, yes. and we're going to follow these three <clears throat> teams through the rest of the movie here. So Team A, Spock and Kirk, secure humpback whales. That's, the, that's their goal. Team B, secure Chekhov and Ahura, gather nuclear power for their decrystallizing dilithium sh- uh, Klingon power core. It'll be easy to do in the 80s, I bet. Yes, they Just will get, have to grab go some to nuclear energy. Grab some nuclear. <clears throat> they have to go to nuclear. a USS Enterprise. Hala, that's funny. Um, 
and they uh, have to get the 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 nuclear power core of this giant yeah. aircraft carrier. Um, and then Team C, Sulu, Bones, and Scotty make something in the Klingon ship to hold the whales, so they can transport yes. the whales back to the future. <laughs> and so here is Team. Here is oh, yeah, Team yeah, yeah. A, and this is yes. what they're up to. Check this out. This is a scene from Aquaman, now, I'm pretty sure. Here's a much better way to see George and Gracie. Underwater. He'll sing anywhere from six to as long as 30 minutes and then start again. I don't know what purpose they oh, serve. Oh, yes. In the ocean, the other whales will pick up the this song so and pass weird. it on. The songs change every year. And kind of navigational signal. Could they be part of Or is it pure <laughs> communication? Comprehension. Frankly, we just don't know. Maybe he's singing to that man. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love that. Well done. I had, had to Just throw in a little on. extra. Put that on TikTok. Could get like thank a you. couple thousand views. Yes! Um... So that's what's going on with Team A. Basically, they go to the aquarium to get some whales, and they meet a woman, and Kirk is about it. Uh, but she's mm, also a about white woman whales. for this movie. <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, Gotta love it. Team B gets these beautiful shots. Side note: um, yeah. Yeah. they are hanging out outside the USS Enterprise, which is a Navy ship. And they uh, go in, th side note, this is the 80s, so like Russia is still the bad guys, right? Cold War, all that sort of stuff. USSR, whatever. Yeah. One of those things was happening in the 80s. Um, Who knows? And so this uh, black woman and Russian man go into this <laughs> yeah. U.S. Navy ship to steal a nuclear power. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, not the most inconspicuous. It uh, was probably group. the worst possible team they could have chosen for this time. <laughs> um, but they they didn't really, you know, racism and all that sort of stuff just really isn't a thing in the future. It's been so cured. They, like, yeah, eradicated. they really didn't th even think about it. So check That's why out we gets need to discover aliens. A little bit. Cause yeah. Once we discover aliens, all all racism will just go away. That's right. We sure. become that's the how, human race. Right? Yep. It's beautiful. Can't wait for that. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, really excited for that, dude. Yeah. If we still have racism after we discover aliens, dude, we'll, I'll be we'll have racism, but it'll be towards the aliens. And not right. <laughs> and we can just all collectively our, uh... hate them instead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful right. stuff. That's the cure. That's what Star Trek's all about. Progress. <laughs> <laughs> racism towards Klingons. That's right. <laughs> um, and so Chekhov gets interrogated, but they get the stuff, and they're ready to go. Meanwhile, Team mm. C uh, is divided <clears throat> into two sub-teams. Um, right. Bones and Scotty uh, meet up with this guy who quit smoking, and Scotty yeah. uses this mouse from the original Macintosh to talk to a computer. Um, he's like, hi, computer. Um <laughs> And so they they basically learn about uh, plexiglass, and right. uh, there's like a this. there's like a straight up ad for plexiglass in this yes. movie, and uh, they use it to make the tank in the Klingon ship. And then Sulu gets a helicopter because he's a pilot and he still knows how yeah. to fly helicopters, and he knocks this guy out and steals his helicopter. And there was a really great GIF where he is messing with the buttons and it starts the windshield wipers, but for some reason Canva could not do GIFs. I Canva, don't know what yeah. happened. I don't uh, know. So you got this boring image instead. I'm so sorry. That's right. And uh, so he gets this helicopter so he can, I guess, carry the whales, I think is yeah, the plan. that makes sense. Or lift the plexiglass. I don't remember. Um, and so they get the whales, they get the tank filled, with, they beam the whales directly into the ship mm -hmm. with a bunch of water so they swim sure. in the ship and then they have the power and the ship flies back out to the sun and they go back to the future and they kind of yes. crash the klingon ship into the san francisco bay 
where with some with some much struggle, uh, they release the whales back into the San Francisco Bay, their home where they always lived, and uh, the probe <laughs> hears their whale song um, from the past and is like, oh, oh, um, they're actually still whales here. Okay, we'll stop destroying the planet, and the probe leaves. We love oh, whales. Yeah, we are whales. Um, maybe. Space whales. That's Space the general whales. consensus, right? Space whales? Yeah, yeah. And so that goes down. Also, the whale lady uh, is taken to the future, and she becomes a right. like ancient history man- marine biologist kind of vibe. Um, yeah. and she goes <clears throat> on a science Pretty vessel cool. to do her thing, which is awesome for her. Pretty cool and, gig. Uh, we learn about the way of water has no beginning oh, or yeah. end. No Beautiful beginning stuff. or end. Absolutely not. It's a pe- I always think when I think of the Flows. way of water, I always think to say the way of water is a pathway to many abilities. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, not Remember that light. movie came out and everybody forgot about it immediately after? It's what yeah, people well, have been talking about for years, and everybody's like, "No, you, yeah, Avatar is amazing." Like, yeah, it is, but nobody cares. Yeah. Anyway, it's a real bummer. This is where okay. my knowledge of these movies absolutely yeah. goes down the drain. I have and that's no why idea I'm really what these excited next two movies to talk are about, about these two movies yeah. because it's Let's crazy go. town. Okay. So this is this is going to be my shortest section because this movie is balls. So it's 1989. <laughs> this is Leonard, the Shatner. Yeah. You know, the um, sh- yeah, yeah, the Shatner. The Shat. You know. That's it. It's... Um, <laughs> so Leonard Nimoy had just directed two movies, and William yes. Shatner has his contract here uh, depicted as Edward Pattinson, uh, Robert Pattinson rather, <laughs> the heck is Edward. Oh, <laughs> like he's Edward in the Twilight. Yeah, my bad. Uh, yes, uh, Robert yes, Pattinson. Yes. Yeah, this is a cool poster, though. I mean, the Isn't guys at the bottom sick, there is pretty actually? dope. I don't know what the who those guys are. Dope. Oh, the, I the do. V theme, the V theme because V because five. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. The the well bottom. Done, those guys. are the uh, something of light. I don't remember the Empire of Light, conglomerate of light. I don't remember. Dang. Wrong movie. No, that's not. That's not the wrong movie. I'm so sorry. Um, we'll, okay, we'll find out together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will, and we will. So Absolutely. Leonard Nimoy just directed two movies, and William Shatner kind of has this whole contract thing with Star Trek, where there's like anything that Spock does. Kirk has to be able to do too. So right. that extends to me. Um, I d- get I to guess. direct a movie. And so he did. And here we can see this one uh, has a 2.5. It is a sharp decrease from the average. <laughs> Very sharp. And uh, I gave this one a one and a half. Ooh. So it is brutal. It is bottoming out here. One-er. Um, it is real bad. One of the worst movies I've seen this year. It's okay. Dang. It's tough. It's tough. <clears throat> and you saw Rebel Moon Part Two: A Chalice of Child of Fire and Blood. That's the, the director's one. ultimate edition. <laughs> That's right. Three and a half hours. Good I watched Lord. two three and a half hour movies in a row, one right Good after the other. Night. What a night. Okay, so Yuck. some time has passed, and the boys are kind of old, right? Yep. And so. They we begin on the planet Nimbus Three. This is the planet Nimbus. of galactic peace. Oh, uh, we find that it is this rundown, dingy Tatooine clone. I um, see that. And Looks exactly like Tatooine. There's a guy out in the desert digging holes. Okay, freaking straight up holes style. Hate that movie, garbage. And uh, you are incorrect, and I'm ending this podcast. Um, <laughs> just kidding. So the man digging holes is confronted by a horseman of the apocalypse. You can see him on the left of your screen. There, his name is Cybok, and yeah, he is awesome a Vulcan. Name. Is a pretty sick name. Pretty sick, nasty name. Cybok. And he's like Sabok. Sabok. Oh, we should play some Sabok. That's a good game. Dude. Let's get into um, it. And, and so, it. I got to start uploading. I have like eight or nine full episodes of Star Wars Outlaws. I need to start hey, uploading. Dude, how long is this game? 
I don't know. Grief. The main quest <clears throat> was like, hey, let's go get this guy, and they got the guy, and then the guy died, and I was like, what? So now I gotta <laughs> find a new guy. Um, huh? Damn. Yeah, so Cybox starts therapizing this uh, guy digging holes, and the guy's like real right. sad, and he starts talking to him about light and life, and he's like, you know what? You're right, and I'm gonna do whatever right. you want for the rest of forever. I will kill for you. Um, okay. We also have... On the planet of galactic peace, somewhere in the neutral zone, Nimbus 3, mm -hmm. we have representatives from the three largest governments in the uh, universe. We have the Klingon Empire, the Federation, and the Romulan Star Empire. These oh, three <clears throat> are hype to have some peace. We have the Federation uh, represent representative Talbot in the middle there. Uh, it's Kathleen <clears throat> Dar from the Romulan Star Empire and Klingon representative Cord. Let's go, Cord. Uh, and they are hanging out on Nimbus 3 when the Vulcan horseman and his large group of people kidnap the three representatives to use them for a ransom. Starfleet sends the crew of the Enterprise to assist on the matter. Um... But they are on leave, meanwhile. Okay, so mm. interesting factoid here. Yosemite National Park looks exactly like it did in the 80s. Uh, but okay. in the in, in 300 some odd years from now, it still looks exactly the same. Uh, Spock is, uh, sorry, Kirk is free soloing this wall. Okay, awesome. like literally the, the movie Free Solo with the little chalk bag and his hands in the cracks and stuff. Yeah, Casual yeah, yeah. William Shatner <clears throat> stuff. He can climb mountains. <laughs> he um, is Tom Cruise. And so Bones and Spock are kind of chilling on the ground, drinking coffee, uh, relaxing. The crew of the Enterprise is on leave. Um, administrative leave, maybe. Who knows? Um, they're just having fun on vacation. Um, then they get this distressed call. This whole thing is going down. Enterprise crew is asked to go fix this issue. So Spock uses some fancy levitating boots to fly up to Kirk, and he's like, Captain. And then Kirk is like, because ah! he, you know, is terrified and, uh, of this flying man that just suddenly appeared. And he falls off the oh. cliff and starts to <clears throat> fall okay. to his death before Spock grabs him <coughs> about two feet from the ground. <clears throat> right. And so they have a little fun in Yosemite, and before they leave, they have a little campfire, and they sing, row, row, row your boat. Uh, okay. Not even joking. We will watch okay. a clip of this at the end of the movie. Okay. Awesome. Exciting stuff for you. And so... Can't wait. Um, what the heck? Why can't I scroll down? There we go. Fix it. Okay, that was stupid. Um, meanwhile... There is Captain Claw. Mm. Captain Claw is hanging right. out, looking very Klingon. <laughs> He's and the most Klingon dude. That's the most Klingon guy I've ever clinged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've ever clinged on to. Clinged and on to. Uh, he clinged also to. is getting a message from his boy, Cord, saying mm. to come and save me and starfleet is sending the enterprise to nimbus 3 to save their federation representative and all the other guys as well of course and uh the klingon guy is coming and he's extra coming because kirk is a worthy warrior and he wants to kill him oh to prove that he is a dope klingon warrior because the klingons today suck and they're all about peace That's right. it's boring hate that Garbage. and so he wants to become the greatest warrior in the galaxy by killing Kirk and his boys. Um, so the Galactic Army of Light. Um, there it is. Led by Cybok. Those are the boys on the bottom of your screen there. Yes. Um, they, they are basically like, what's up? Um, this is our hostage tape. Check it out. And Spock is like... That guy, I think I know that guy. 
And mm. so Kirk and the remaining boys here, these are the remaining boys um, who are still hanging out. They're still rocking it. Um, and they are just going to freaking have a little stealth mission to get the boys out. Okay, the representatives. And so Uhura dresses up like a dancer lady woman and okay. like tries to seduce all of these guards out of the town. Oh, okay. And she's like Shatter. literally like What's up, boys? Oh, um <laughs> and oh, no. so that goes down. Shatner, you dog. And then Kirk and the rest of the squad kind of go into the town and are immediately taken hostage. The plan didn't work at all. It sucked. Okay. And so they uh, they meet Cybok, and Spock's uh, suspicions are proven true. Cybok is Spock's half-brother. What? Now, uh, Sarek, Spock's dad, had uh, a, a marriage previous to his marriage with Spock's mom, who's played by Winona no Ryder way. in the new movies. Um, he had crazy. a first marriage and a first child, Cybok. And Cybok, he believes that heaven, uh, which in the... Um, in the Vulcan religion is Shakari. Right. He believes that that's real, and it's not just a metaphor. It's a real place, and it's beyond the Great Barrier, and that's where we're going. I kidnapped these right. representatives so that I could get <clears throat> a, a ship that can take us through the Great Barrier and get us to heaven place, Shakari. Side note, the Great Barrier is this uh, this weird effect um, going okay. on. Okay. We'll talk about that. Basically, it is the center of the universe. There's okay. this barrier going on. And at right. the barrier, if you go in, you don't come out. So okay. the assumption is, in general, death. But uh, Cybok believes that they can go inside and they will meet... God. God. Okay. So Cybok here, what a charismatic guy. What a beautiful oh, he looks smile. Awesome. He's a I hang gorgeous. Out with him. Yeah. He's a talker. Okay. <laughs> so his whole thing is he talks to you and then you will just believe whatever he says and do whatever okay. he wants. And so oh. he starts talking to people on the Enterprise crew. And basically takes over the entire crew's minds. Whoa. And they all Whoa. just join the Galactic Army of Light. Except for Scotty, Bones, Spock, and Kirk. The the okay, real okay. boys. These are the boys of the boys. Like, there's the boys, and then there's the inner boys. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The inner circle. The inner circle. We all have boys. one. Yeah. Um, and so they are able to escape their little their little thing. And they climb into a turbo shaft on their way to communications. They send a message uh, out to anybody that'll listen, but it's only received by Claw, Captain Claw. Oh, Captain! And Claw. so he's like, "Now I know where the boys the are." Ulysses Claw. That's right. Oh, Claw. <laughs> um. So, uh, let's see here. I believe. Scotty is left behind at one point, and Cybok gets to him and brainwashes him. Then eventually, um, Kirk, Spock, and Bones are left in the fancy viewing room where they have parties and stuff, and that's where they sent their message. <clears throat> but Cybok finds them there and attempts to brainwash them by showing them uh, beautiful visions of their past he makes Bones confront the death of his father and how he couldn't oh. save him. Uh, and this makes Bones sad, but also uh, perfectly and 100% loyal to Cybok. Then he shows Cybok something to Spock. And he's also like, 
Yes, I believe everything you're saying, and I love you, brother. And uh, then he starts to do it with Kirk, and Kirk is like, No! Don't even do it to me! I won't be taken... You'll have to kill me! And um, then they all are like, Ha ha, just kidding! It didn't work at all. And oh. uh, he's like, Okay, whatever. We're going through the Great Barrier with or without you guys, because you can't really okay. do anything. And so they have a couple guys stand guard and watch them. And then they breach the Great Barrier. And what do they find on the other side? A whole purple planet. No way. And on this purple planet, <clears throat> um, circumstances arise. Basically, uh, Cybok is like, I'm going to the surface. Um, you guys chill out. Um, Bones... Spock, Kirk, you guys come with me. Uh, I'm going to prove to you that this is real. Besides the fact that there is a planet here that was hiding behind this great barrier in the inside of the universe. It's crazy. Um, so this, the planet is uh, another desert, because that's all planets are in Star Trek. They're all deserts. And um, this one is purple. Purple desert. Not to be confused with the future purple desert looking planet that we have in the next movie um but basically here they are uh meeting god sweet <clears throat> god like uh, uh li literally god all right oh, no. oh. It's amazing. It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> so yes. No just way. Answer, just answer. Did I just doubts. watch that happen? They literally. What is, is this guy? This is God. Um, this is this is the God from Monty Python. It's hilarious. It's literally the same. He looks like the teddy Excuse bear. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, oh Cybok meets God. And um, <laughs> he's like, hey, how did you guys get here? And Cybok is like, we took a starship. And he's like, could we take that starship really? and leave? <laughs> and he's like, sure. <laughs> and Spock is like, uh, why do you want to leave? Can't you just leave whenever you want? And yeah, he's God. like, fine, I'm not God, but I'm going to kill you guys. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so he just starts going crazy and shooting okay. laser beams and, God. and uh, lightning everywhere. Good Lord, he's the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And um, so they start to run away and Chekhov, uh, he's back on the Enterprise. He shoots God with a torpedo. <laughs> and God is like pissed, right? Awesome. And so Kirk and the boys and Cybok return to the shuttle and get beamed up. But then, once they leave, <laughs> the Klingons are back. They also breach the Great Barrier. Uh, and yeah. they are like, hey. Um, oh, sorry. Um, Kirk was left on the planet. He didn't make it because God's lightning oh. uh, <laughs> beat him up a little. So he didn't, okay. make it to the, he didn't make it to the Enterprise. Sure. But he sure. gets taken back. Um, the Klingon ship beams him up. And then they start, to, as a hostage, of course, and um, of course. they start to attack the Enterprise. And um, they fight a little bit, and then Spock and the Klingon representative, uh, Claw, no, Cord, um, yes. were talking, um, and because they're, you know, the Romulan and the Federation and, and the Klingon guys are all on the ship, too. They, they came with right. them when they left Nimbus 3. And uh, they were like, actually, um, Claw is not, he's not cool. He's not with us. We want peace. And uh, huh. we're going to take his command from him. And he's like, no! And um, so then the movie just kind of ends. 
and uh, they awesome. go back on vacation because this this was just a quick little thing <clears throat> they yeah, had to do trip real quick. With the boys <laughs> meet God, and then we're out. Uh, oh, and man. here they Despite... are. <laughs> Sorry, let's what, see what? it. Oh, yeah. Let's so see, here let's they see. are. I'm just gonna sit there and block that thing. Or are you gonna play something? Excuse me. Gently down the stream. Oh, they're doing a round. Yeah, they're just, they do a round. Excuse me? Um, okay. It's, it's awful. They are all bad singers. And That's if awesome. you'll notice, uh, when Kirk... Notice when Kirk starts singing here. If you can hear the beat. Well. <laughs> Turn this up. He kind of comes in. <laughs> it's too early. Yeah. Yeah. Really early. Oh my lord. But, um, Shatner, what are you doing? It is sort of like I do actually enjoy this ending. Um, sure. I think Shatner was under the impression that this was the end of his his boys. And Star Trek in yeah. general. This and is so the last he, movie and the last thing you'll ever do. Yeah, it's called The Final Frontier. Yeah. Uh, that's what they've been doing this whole time. <clears throat> it kind of feels like this is the finale vibe. Dang, that's um, crazy. He met God so, at the end. Yeah. Um, I kind of thought that he, he was he was like, what can we do? You know? And so yeah. let me just bust out God, and then we're going to hit you with the campfire <laughs> ending. because I like the campfire. It's yeah, not too bad. I, it says right there at the bottom, low key, beautiful ending. Low key, beautiful ending. Um, if they were better singers, I would have liked it a little bit more. Dang. But yeah, so that's. I wish I knew the behind the scenes information about this. So I yeah, there's there were also a lot of um, there was also a lot of production delays and stuff. There was um, sure sag aftra strike, writer strike, and all that stuff was happening. One of the many strikes as well. Um, sure. So there was there were delays and sort of that sort of stuff in production. Uh, oh, man. And then we'll move. It's one of my on. favorite things you've favorite things you ever said in the podcast. <laughs> and God was like so pissed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was, dude. He was pissed. He got shot dude, with a God torpedo. God was so pissed. Yeah, he got a torpedo. All right. But there's and another finally, movie. We enter the nineties. Uh, yes. Nicholas Meyer comes back to direct the actual finale because they were like, we we can't end on a loss, so we got we just got to throw one extra movie in there. And uh, so they pull out Nicholas Meyer from Wrath of Khan, and they say, hey, can you do one more? And he's can like, sure. Let me bust out one last banger. This one gets a three point six. I'm at three point five, so I'm right on the money. Let's go again. Okay, I am ready. Here we go, So, guys. this movie basically begins with um, a giant explosion. All right? Awesome. The, the moon of the Klingon planet. Klingon planet. I don't know its name. Um, it might just be Klingon. Maybe? I don't know. No, it's like... Um, uh, I don't know. It's like Gorbunga Crime or something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like Gorbunga crime. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, so the yeah. nearby moon of Praxis has exploded uh, due to bad mining practices, um, unsafe conditions and sort of stuff. The workers didn't unionize in time and mm. uh, basically got blown up to smithereens. Now, the Klingon Empire is going to completely obliterate Basically, the, the entire society will fall apart because sure. of their dilithium shortage. Spaceships aren't going to be able to fly soon. And the Federation is at war. They're not going to sell them anything. Um, so the Klingon president, uh, Chancellor, rather, Gorkon. Uh, Gorkon. Gorkon is like, hey, Federation guys, um, I think it's time for peace because we... Our whole society is going to fall apart here in a couple of years. Mm. Uh, so we're kind of over this whole war thing. We need to just do the peace thing. And so the Federation meets up all the boys here. 
all the all the all the homies are here the leaders everybody and um they're like yeah i think this is this is fine we will call it a win um yeah. and also captain sulu okay he's a captain now and he is running the ship excelsior which uh, is that transwarp drive ship that we mentioned in the past heck yeah sulu yeah Get um that bag so, in order to get the Klingon representatives to the Peace Summit, where they will have peace, uh, the Enterprise is charged with bringing Gorkon and his homies uh, over to the planet. So, they are charged with that. And, reminder, uh, Kirk is super racist against Klingons because they <laughs> killed his son. Here he right. is being in a racist rage um so the klingons uh are ferried by the enterprise and they even have fun dinner time uh where they quote shakespeare and hitler um sort of a weird vibe but they shakespeare and hitler yeah the 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 two greats um (laughs) (laughs) the great uh, poets of our time there is also a moment, mind you, um, before these guys are here, where Spock and Kirk are talking about um, peace and how it's a vibe, and Kirk is like, nah, dude. And he literally says, <laughs> let them die. Kirk, um, my guy. Yes, reminder, they did they did kill a son, but that's not really a reason for genocide or, and, all, and all that sort of stuff. Ooh, yeah. um, also, also... They, uh, uh, Spock has brought along a new cadet. He's brought a new Vulcan lady, and her name is Valeris, and she will pop up later. Very Um, good. And so, uh, here are our Klingon homies. So we have Chancellor Gorkon here. Uh, we have his daughter, the princess Azet Burr. Okay. And General Chang. <laughs> um, these are the three Great. named characters. I don't know what the guards' names awesome. are there in the back, but they have some Romulan wine. Uh, they have some fun. Mm. They have some good times. They chat about peace and prosperity, and they go their separate ways. And all is looking well. Until this occurs. Uh, oh. Chancellor Gorkon is dead. A murder. So, shortly after the Klingons return to their ship, uh, power outages occur on both ships. Weird sort of thing goes down. Uh, And an invisible force uh, shoots a torpedo at the Klingon ship. Amidst this chaos as well, two Starfleet-clad assassins in... in Mm. In traditional space suits of Starfleet, uh, board the ship and shoot a bunch of Klingons, killing Chancellor Gorkon in the midst. Kirk okay. and uh, Kirk and Bones beam over to the ship in an attempt to save them. These are Bones' hands. Uh, you can see with the pink blood there. Also, uh, quick reminder that this is 1991 and like the beginning of CG. And uh, they put a very particular emphasis on the excess flow and zero gravity of the mm. pink blood everywhere. Every time one of these guys gets shot, there's a huge spew of CGI flubber blood. I love uh, that. It's crazy. It, they, their blood looks like little morphs from Treasure Planet. Great movie. Five stars. It's all right. <sighs> that is a strike two. <laughs> that is strike two. <clears throat> two of your okay. favorite movies. I've disparaged yeah. Bashed. this podcast so far. Real hard. That's rough. Um, okay, so... Um, Kirk and Bones are... Basically, they are convinced that... The Klingons, sorry. The Klingons and General Chang, who survived, as well as his daughter... Princess okay. now Chancellor Azet Burr uh, are convinced Burr. that Kirk and Bones uh, deliberately assassinated 
uh, Chancellor Gorkon because they play back the tape because when Kirk and Spock were talking about peace and how good it would be and Kirk was like, let him die. Um, that was mm-hmm. during a uh, commander's log, uh, captain's log. Uh-huh. And so they have it on recording and they play it at the, at the Klingon trial and they condemn Bones and uh, they sentence them to life on Rura Penthe, which is a freezing cold purple planet where they are sure. imprisoned for life uh, to mine dilithium, um, which is their only source for the Klingon Empire remaining. And the Federation is like, I mean, the evidence is there. They shot the torpedo um, and stuff like that. Meanwhile, this is uh, Valeris, by the way. Um, okay. Spock and Valeris lead a um, investigation. They are looking for evidence of the crimes of what happened because they don't believe. Obviously, Kirk and Bones did not kill Gorkon yeah. and all these other Klingons. It couldn't Who have would? been them. Right. And looking at the inventory on the Enterprise, no torpedoes are missing. Oh. But there is a record of a torpedo firing. The energy signal of a torpedo is fired, and they have visual Dang. proof. They saw a torpedo hit the Klingon ship. How okay. can this be? They also begin to look declare. for evidence of the assassins who mm. weren't on the Klingon ship, so they have to be on the Enterprise. So they start looking around. On the prison planet... During this investigation, we meet Marsha Martia, this alien lady, and she can transform her body. She is a changeling. Right. Um, I don't know if that's what they call them in Star Trek, but that's what they call them in Star Wars, so we're just going to do that. Sure. The changelings. They're basically the same yeah. franchise anyway. So. <clears throat> and so Marsha's like, hey, you want to get out of here? And Kirk is like, yeah. And then they make out for a little while. And um, Bones is like, ha ha, he's still got it. Um, (laughs) And so they... um, They start to work on their escape plan. And she reveals that she can change into big monsters and stuff. And she's cool. And they start to escape. Then... Um, they need to get out of this. There's like a dome shield thing around the prison location that makes it so that they can't be beamed off the surface by any okay. passing by ships. And so they need to exit the dome. Um, and it's super cold. They're going to freeze to death. <clears throat> so, uh, before... Yeah, well, while they're they're exiting, they 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 find out that they um, Spock had put a little patch on Kirk before he was taken by the Klingons, so that he could be tracked. Uh, because of course okay. Spock always has a plan. He always knows what's going to happen in the future. He's got his boy taken care of, and he's got his boy. <clears throat> So he can track him. He knows where he is. He will pop up geolocated when uh, he exits the magnet dome on the prison. Mm. Mm. Then we find out, oh my gosh, Martia, Marcia, uh, Mm -hmm. is working for the prison, the Klingon prison. And she wanted to do this. She would get them to escape so that they could kill them for escaping the prison because they couldn't give them a death sentence in the original trial. So they worked with her in exchange for a full pardon. She would help them escape so that they could be killed for trying to escape their prison sentence. Um, And then they're like, haha, we were lying, Marsha. We're going to kill you too. So she... She switches to Kirk. She starts to look like Kirk um, for some reason. 
Oh, you know what? You know what's going on. She, she tells them that this is the plan. She knows that they're gonna kill her, so okay. she switches into Kirk, so that she can get beamed off with bones right. before that happens. But they figured out the Klingons show up and they kill Marsha. Uh, oh. Seen here getting shot while looking like Kirk. I see. Okay. Then, the uh, Enterprise is there just in the nick of time. Uh, and beams up Kirk and Bones. So, meanwhile, the investigation is taking place. Um, and basically, these are the boys. These are the assassins here. And they are dead and perished and deceased. They have died. <laughs> and their uniforms were found. Uh, and Damn. there was blood. And there's a little scene where Spock figures out, like... If we tell, um, if we tell the, we tell the whole ship that these guys are alive, then the person who killed them will come back to finish the job because they know who did it, mm. who paid them to do this assassination stuff, right? So then he's sitting in the medical bed in the pitch dark and Valeris shows up with a gun and she's going to kill them. And then Spock turns on the light, and he's, like, lit it, sitting there with his covers on. And he's like, and he's like, I'm so disappointed in you. Oh. <laughs> um, and Kirk is there, too. And he's like, I'm disappointed in you, too. And I'm Kirk. Oof. Um, and so then they take her to the bridge, and they're, like, interrogating her. They're like, where's the peace summit? Because they moved it now, because these assassins are know where it was. So they changed the location. And so she's like, where is he? Uh, sorry, Kirk is asking Valeris where the new peace summit is because she has a plan with General Chang. Uh, so, side note, General Chang is in on it. Um, oh. He wanted Gorkon dead because peace is never an option. What is General Chang going to do after he loses the war? What do generals do when the wars end? You know what I mean? White Christmas. Eh. And so... Yep. Um, Become hotel managers in Vermont. That's a great movie. Yeah, such a good movie. Five star. What do you do with a general <laughs> when he stops being a general? Um, yeah. So Valeris gets mind melded super hard, like Cad Bane style, <laughs> um, in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, if you can recall. Um, yep. And they basically break her brain, and she screams and stuff. And he's like, uh, she doesn't actually know. Uh, <laughs> Dang! She so I broke her brain yeah. though. And so, let's see here. Mind was her, with her. Um, but we do find out who is in charge of the assassination attempt. Mm. It is obviously General Chang, but it is also a Romulan ambassador, um, Nankless, and All right. uh, Admiral Cartwright. Uh, no. Seen here, um, right there. Dang. And Traitor. so these these three uh, want the war to continue because war is super dope, and uh, <laughs> profitable. So, profitable and profitable indeed, indeed. So they have this plan. They eventually uh, kind of sneak in, figure out where the. Um, where the uh, peace summit is, and they go to the peace summit to stop because the Klingons, uh, under the employ of General Chang, are going to kill the um, the representative of the Klingon Empire who is speaking about peace in an attempt to continue the war forever. Mm. So here is the ending uh, of that. I imagine this work will occupy us for well, almost a week. The capital to implement the right. provisions of phase one no later than the first of next month. Mr. President! Mr. President! Kirk. Kirk, just a minute. What's the nice. meaning of all of this? You've restored my father's faith. Hmm. And you've restored my sons. Mm. What? Oh. 
Okay. Cute. So let's take this let's take this bit by bit here. So <laughs> we got to work this out slowly here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The sniper Klingon rifle. sniper is going to kill the Romulan president. Okay. okay. I had my facts mixed up. Um, they go, and he's like, "Mr. President," and this guy's like standing here and just completely oblivious, Ooh. absolutely Ooh. no idea what's going on. Does an epic dolphin dive. Uh, does not is not in the way of the blast b- blaster at all which he just misses the shot. Um, yep. Then Bones captures the uh, Romulan Nyanklus here, mm. who wants the war to continue. Uh, Spock reveals um, Valeris to Admiral Cartwright, who quickly runs away. Scotty, this is unedited, by the way, from this door bash, this is unedited. <laughs> Uh, just to <laughs> love that, <laughs> loving that, awesome. Um, so he defeats the Klingon guy, and then Sulu, who's been tailing the entire movie on the Excelsior, he's just been like a couple scenes behind the entire time. Okay. Finally catches up, and Cartwright, just a minute, what? just a minute, uh, Admiral Cartwright, just a minute. and here is the uh, Princess Chancellor, uh, Azutbar or whatever her name is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, she's like, "What the heck is going on?" Meaning of all of this. And then he explains. You've restored my father's faith. Yeah. And you've restored my sons. He gets a applause, and uh, then the Excelsior and the other ship. Uh, it's been a long way. <laughs> yeah, uh, for real. <laughs> and I'll see uh, you on they, the other they, side. Yeah. Um, and so the peace talks resume. They're like, this is just a little plot. It's not a big deal. It's not representative of our whole thing. Um, and peace is restored across the galaxy. Love that. Yeah. Congrats, James T. Kirk. James T. Kirk. James Tiberius. What was the name of this one? The Undiscovered uh, Country? Undiscovered Country. Right. A reference to a little murder mystery something going on. Yeah, love it. Um, okay, let me. Yeah. Okay. Yep. There we and go. that's only the first six movies. Yes, we have <laughs> seven more to go. Oy. You guys. Uh, next vey. time I'll be working on Star Trek Generations, um, First Contact, Insurrection, and Nemesis. Which Ooh. are the Picard ones with Data and Worf and those guys. And then the reboots will be their own part as well. Probably the Love shortest that. episode. Maybe even just half of an episode. We can do some other yeah. stuff on the side of that. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to Star Trek. Clearly my favorite star related <laughs> thing. He's got a um, massive Lego USS Enterprise back dude, there. There isn't a single Lego <laughs> Star Trek set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kids are probably, into that stuff. Yeah, probably. Not that Lego's for kids, but it's not, dude. If this was for kids, <laughs> dude, kids would hate that. Uh, it's for the kid and all of us. Wow, we can agree. That's on that. beautiful. We can agree on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So tune in next time for an. I might watch a Star Trek episode. movie right now. And uh, I'll be coming back with some more Star Trek stuff in the future um, Love as I continue to watch these movies and write more notes because I wrote so many notes and they mm. were no help. So we're going to do a little bit better <laughs> next time. <laughs> um, Can't wait. First Contact is my favorite Star Trek movie, I think. Wow. Love that movie. I... I'll be honest, I have a really strong mental block with Picard movies. It's, I, like, now that Spock isn't in it, it's really just like, eh. Yeah, you that's know? why I, I can never get into the show, because I'm like, I don't know any of these guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm not into this. Data. Not into, yeah. the, not into the way that that guy looks. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> His like, weird metal skin. Yeah. I don't like it. It's really I don't bad. Like it. But anyway. 